During the 1960s, at the height of the space race between the United States and the Soviet Union, the United States was pursuing the Apollo program with the intention of landing astronauts on the moon. The program ultimately led to 11 missions, including six successful lunar landing missions. What was not widely known at the time, however, was that the Soviet Union also had plans for a crewed lunar program. Initial studies were carried out starting in 1960, however, competing designs and rivalry between the designers delayed the actual go-ahead for a lunar project until 1964, putting the Soviets behind the Americans who had already commenced work on the Apollo project three years earlier. Work progressed, but was slowed by further infighting among the designers, with the project slipping further behind the progress of the Apollo program. Despite the delays, work started on the Heavy Lift N-1 rocket and the L-3 lunar spacecraft. The L-3 was similar in configuration to that of the Apollo spacecraft, consisting of a lunar orbiter, the Soyuz 7-LOK, and a separate lunar lander, the LK. Although similar in configuration to the Apollo spacecraft, one major difference between Apollo and the Soviet lunar program was while the Apollo spacecraft carried three astronauts, the L-3 was designed to carry two cosmonauts. The LK lander was much smaller than the Apollo lunar module. Another difference was that Apollo was boosted out of low Earth orbit by the third stage of the Saturn V. The L-3, on the other hand, consisted of two additional small boosters, one of which was to boost the spacecraft at a low Earth orbit towards the Moon. This was to be jettisoned after leaving Earth orbit. The second small booster, called Block D, would be fired to slow the L-3 into lunar orbit. The mission profile was planned to be similar to that of Apollo, although only one cosmonaut would pilot the LK to the lunar surface, while the other would remain aboard the, the Soyuz in lunar orbit. The LOK lacked the internal docking tunnel of Apollo, which would have required that one of the cosmonauts exit the Soyuz and spacewalk to the docked LK lander. Upon reaching lunar orbit, after one of the cosmonauts spacewalked to the LK, the LK with the Block D attached would then separate from the Soyuz and begin the descent to the surface. From that point, the LK would continue towards landing using its own engine. While on the surface, the cosmonaut was to operate robotic rovers that had been sent in advance of the mission and gather rocks, as well as planting the Soviet flag. After completion of surface activities, the LK would depart the lunar surface by firing its engine, with the landing gear serving as a launch pad, like what was done with the Apollo lunar module. The LK would dock with the LOK, and the cosmonaut would spacewalk to the LOK, bringing the rocks that were collected. The LK would be jettisoned, and the Soyuz engine would be fired to leave lunar orbit to return to Earth. The plan was ambitious, with the first landing planned for September of 1968. The N-1 was the heavy lift rocket designed for the project, and was the counterpart to the American Saturn V developed for the Apollo program. The Saturn V was already in development by 1961, while N-1 development did not begin until 1964, due to the previously mentioned conflict among the designers. The N-1 was similar in size to the American Saturn V at 344 feet tall versus the Saturn V at 363 feet. It was larger at the base, being 56 feet in diameter, versus the 36 feet in diameter at the base for the Saturn V. One major difference was that while the Saturn V had five large engines in its first stage, the N-1 had 30 much smaller engines in its first stage, generating 10.2 million pounds of thrust at liftoff versus the 7.5 million pounds of thrust of the Saturn V that was generated by, by the five F-1 engines. Another major difference between the Saturn V and the N-1 was that while the Saturn V had three stages, 
The N1 had five stages, three to boost the L3 complex in the low Earth orbit, and the fourth and fifth stages for translunar injection out of Earth orbit and lunar orbit insertion. It was assembled horizontally and carried on a transporter to the launch pad and raised vertically. Development delays continued, and it was clear that a lunar landing would not be carried out until late 1969 or early 1970 at the earliest. By this point, there was no chance of the Soviets beating the Americans to the moon, with the Americans having already carried out the Apollo 8 lunar orbital mission in December of 1968. The first launch attempt was on February 21, 1969, with N-13L. The initial liftoff was successful. However, vibrations began rupturing propellant lines, and a fire started in the first stage, Destroying the electrical system in the booster, and the control system shut down the engines 68 seconds into the flight. At 183 seconds into the flight, the rocket impacted the ground 32 miles from the launch site. The next N-1 launch was planned to send an uncrewed spacecraft around the moon to partially upstage Apollo. The second launch attempt was with rocket 5L on July 3, 1969. A few seconds after liftoff, an engine exploded and a fire started as the rocket cleared the launch tower. The control system shut down the engines and the rocket fell back onto the launch pad and the spacecraft was saved by the escape system. The rocket's impact and resulting explosion destroyed the launch complex and it took 18 months to rebuild the pad. By now there was no possibility of carrying out a landing mission before the Americans and the first crewed lunar landing occurred on July 20th with the Apollo 11 mission. However, despite this, work continued into the 1970s, and test flights of the L-3 hardware were conducted on smaller rockets. The third launch attempt was of rocket N-16L, which took place on June 26, 1971. The rocket was carrying an L-3 mock-up. Shortly following liftoff, the rocket went into a roll that the control system was unable to correct and the roll increase causing the rocket to break up due to structural loads at 48 seconds into the flight. The upper stages tore free and crashed four miles from the launch site, while the first and second stages continued further, crashing nine miles from the launch site. The fourth attempt was with rocket 7L, on November 23, 1972. The rocket carried a Soyuz 7K-LOK in a mock-up LK lander and was planned to be a lunar flyby. Initial liftoff was successful, but 90 seconds into the flight, the control system shut down six of the engines to minimize aerodynamic forces on the rocket. This caused vibrations that ruptured propellant lines and started a fire, followed by the explosion of an engine. At 110 seconds into the flight, the first stage disintegrated. The launch escape system pulled the spacecraft clear, and the remaining stages of the rocket crashed downrange. A fifth launch was planned with rocket 8L for August of 1974, which was to be an uncrewed lunar flyby with the L-3 spacecraft combination. However, further in one launches were canceled, along with plans for using the L-3 configuration for a lunar mission. Plans were made for five crewed missions between 1976 and 1980 with more advanced spacecraft and were to be more ambitious than the Apollo landing missions with longer times on the surface. However, the entire program was ultimately canceled in May of 1974 and the Soviet space program shifted to their series of Salyut space stations. The Soviets did meet with later success with their Luna series of uncrewed landers that returned soil samples to Earth, as well as the Luna Cod lunar rovers. Despite the failure of the Soviet program to reach the moon, it was still as ambitious as the American Apollo project. It might have succeeded had it been more focused and started a few years earlier. In a sense, part of the Soviet lunar program exists today in the form of the Soyuz spacecraft that, in various versions, has been in use since the late 1960s 
for the Soviet and later Russian space programs, and today is one of the spacecraft that carries crew to and from the International Space Station. Thanks for watching, and if you've enjoyed this video, please click, like, and subscribe, and remember, when the future was cool.